Okay, so for today's English lesson, we are going to build on the video from Mr. Bache from yesterday, which was where you were introduced to our Mark Twain poem, uh, This Is Indeed India, and then you illustrated one line of the poem. So we're going to go slightly deeper than that today. Uh, let me just share my screen with you so you can follow along. There we go. Okay, so, uh -huh. sorry, move myself out the way. So, Today, we're going to have a go at story mapping the entire poem. Well, I say the entire poem. Um, I'll talk about what a story map is and what is what its purpose is as we go along. OK, if I do the next slide. Ooh. Right. OK, sorry. OK, so this is indeed India. I think this probably works slightly better. If I do this view, I think it's, it's a bit clearer. OK, so this is indeed India by Mark Twain. He was an American writer who travelled to India. So the land of dreams and romance, of fabulous wealth and fabulous poverty, of splendour and rags, of palaces and hovels, of famine and pestilence of genie and giants and Aladdin's lamps, of tigers and elephants, the cobra and the jungle, the country of hundred nations and hundred tongues, of a thousand religions and two million gods, cradle of the human race, birthplace of human speech, mother of history, grandmother of legend, great grandmother of traditions, the one sole country under the sun that is endowed with an imperishable interest for alien prince and alien peasant, for lettered and ignorant, wise and fool, rich and poor, bond and free, the one land that all men desire to see, and having seen once of even a glimpse, the riches of all the rest of the world combined. Okay, so that is the basis of our poem. I'm going to go back to here. Okay, so um, this is one line of the poem. This is one that you may have illustrated yesterday. So it says, the land of dreams and romance. So does this literally mean that India is where you dream and people fall in love? No, it doesn't. Um, in poems, lots of poets use something called figurative language. So it might mean the land of dreams. So it might mean somewhere that, that's quite dreamlike, that's quite serene. So it could be this. So obviously you can't see it very well because you've got that stop showing thing, but you've got the, those beautiful mountains, beautiful palaces, the rivers, like it's it's got lots of tropical islands. So it could be something that someone dreamed of. Mm -hmm. Romance, lovely. Um, and the romance, it doesn't necessarily mean like to fall in love with someone. It could be to kind of fall in love with this place with like this dreamlike state. Behind me, over here. You can see some more images. There go. Oh, move me over here now. This is fun. Uh, There's another nice image. Oh, move me again. There's Mark Twain again. Okay. So Twain meant that India um, makes people have wonderful dreams based on that it is a very beautiful country, as we can see from these images. Okay, what about this one then? Have a think about this one. Our fabulous wealth and fabulous poverty. So to be fabulous means something is really, really good. But obviously to be wealthy would be superb, wouldn't it? To win the lottery about now. Uh, not that we could go anywhere because it's a travel ban. Um, but it obviously wouldn't be fabulous to be very poor, to be in poverty. So what could Twain mean here? So fabulous may not necessarily mean really, really good. It might mean huge in scope. So it might be big in scope, like that poverty is overwhelming. It's fabulous wealth and fabulous poverty. So to fabulous, we've taken the dictionary definition here, means extraordinary, especially extraordinarily large. So that you just see how fabulous can have dual meanings there. OK, there we go. So you can see on the left, that's one of the Indian palaces, very rich, very opulent. But then, unfortunately, lots of Indian people live in slums that are on the right of your screen at the moment. Uh, and they literally they don't have a house to live in. You know, they have to build it out of kind of tin and, and even cardboard. Um, so it's just like India is such a land of contrast. So I think that's what Twain was trying to get across there. There he is again. Uh, oh, here we go. Move me so we can read it. So Twain meant that India has huge contrast. Nice semicolon, Mr. Beish 
great. It has people who are very rich and people who are very poor. Okay. Move on. Okay, so this is your task today. So you need to go back in this video and find the This Is Incredible India slide. Um, you're going to story map the poem. So what we mean by that is you're going to pick out the key moments in the poem and draw the key moments. So, for example, um, I'm not very good at drawing, as people in my class know. So if I was picking out the line, the land of dreams and romance, I might draw like a stick, a sleep maybe with some Zs, and then romance, I might draw a heart, and then move on, you know, or fabulous wealth and fabulous poverty. It's okay to pick out uh, a few keywords. Obviously, we don't want you to rewrite the entire poem, but I would definitely write out the word fabulous, and then for wealth, I might draw a crown, and um, maybe for poverty, maybe draw someone crying or a tin shack or something like that. Um, so literally story map it out. The aim is for about five or six key moments and pictures. What we don't want is you to draw out every single picture. That's just going to take too long. You know, that's going to take you a good two or three hours. That's not what we want. It's supposed to be just a kind of quick sketch is to help you remember the poem. You can write the keywords for each line or section. Um, yes yeah, so all you need to do is go back in this video pause it there pick out the key bits um and then you will draw out your story map um you will need it for tomorrow so if you could just keep it somewhere that you have to hand because you will need it for tomorrow's lesson okay and that's it that's all you've got to do in english today very little writing required and i will see you for tomorrow's video where we will be using our story map to do something else